Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a La Palma volcano update, along with an Iceland volcanic uptick update. Welcome to the show. We're looking live at Cumbre Vieja Volcano on La Palma on the 24th day of the eruption. And it is quite spectacular, to say the least. Now, just to bring you up to speed, Cumbre Vieja is erupting now for the third time in just over 60 years. And the current eruption is being registered at the Volcanic, Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI Index, of VEI-2. And that has to do with the output of gases and debris into the air, as well as lava output. The simultaneous conclusion is that Cumbre Vieja's current eruption, the one we're witnessing now, which is now 24 days old, is VEI-2. Who knew? Now, this volcano uh, is tiny compared to volcanoes worldwide. This would be considered a small cinder cone. Cinder cones are typically small. It's the stratocones and larger volcanoes like St. Helens that are explosive and more violent, as well as the ones on Iceland, which we'll get to in just a moment. Now, we're going to keep this running. The live stream here over at Volcano YT. Give them a thumbs up there and subscribe to the channel like we have uh, because they're just a wealth of knowledge. And we help blow that channel up in its early days so they're well aware of what we're doing. Now let's get on with the latest update at La Palma. Not much has changed in the last 24 hours since our last update. Um, seismic tremor has increased ever so slightly. But let's read what they have to say here. The activity has been stable during the past 24 hours. At the cone, pulsating lava fountains continue from the more or less merged vents inside the crater, generating an ash plume rising about 10,000 feet and drifting towards southerly directions away from most of the people on the island, which is good news. So the trade winds have shifted. And thanks to those trade winds, avoiding ash drifting over the east coast, the airport of La Palma, which is currently operating today, but 11 flights were canceled and others delayed according to the local news. Now the volcanic tremor remains at high, the same rate. It has increased a tiny bit, they say, just like we, we, we noticed on the telemetry, suggesting continued high effusive rates of magma. So that seismic tremor determines how much magma is gonna be flowing out of this. Um, and so let's just get on to the lava flows for you, shall we? So here we are at the most recent lava flow map. This is the new northern arm, still has not reached the sea, but it's getting ever so closer. So those um, lava flow front numbers they were giving out yesterday were completely nonsense. They're, this is not moving at a quarter mile an hour, or it would have reached the sea already, because it's only a quarter mile to the sea. The southern arm here is getting ever so closer, spreading out laterally across the farmland down here and will eventually reach the sea. So it could be a three-point ocean entry, which has never happened in the last 60 years of eruptions, just a single point entry. And so that would be something groundbreaking. And what we are witnessing is a once in a probably thousand year eruption, because that is just um, the time frame we are in as far as cosmic cycles are involved. So there's that. And now let's look at the earthquakes in the last 24 hours. There, The down drop continues. During the past 24 hours, La Palma volcano was shaken by just one earthquake of magnitude 4.1, 15 quakes between 3 and, and 4 magnitude, and 50 quakes between 2 and 3. This should actually say between 3 and 4. Oh, it does. Okay. So we're looking at about 65, 70 quakes, which is much less than two days ago when it was 150 quakes in 24 hours. And that means that the density of the quakes at depth are going to be much less. And here we are. Uh, we reported last night here on this region where the density had decreased. A little uptick earlier today, but minor compared to the past. And the overall decrease in large seismic events is very noticeable on the histogram here. It's becoming quite sparse which is indicative of potentially this would be the center of the eruptive force around day 21 to 23, and then it's going to be waning from here. It's anybody's guess, but our prediction is that this volcano will last just another week, maybe two weeks, and it will slowly decrease over time. 
based on all the telemetry that's coming in, based on the visual observation of the volcano itself. It's no longer fountaining for 10 hours at 1,000 feet high. It's much smaller, just a few a hundred meters or less on these lava splashes. Um, and clearly the effusive rate of the lava has decreased. It has not reached the sea, the northern or the southern arm. So that's all good news coming from La Palma. Now let's change our focus to Iceland. And let's look at the latest update from Iceland Geology, October 12th. Inflation and earthquake activity at Asha Volcano. Inflation has been increasing in Asha Volcano over the last few weeks. Several weeks ago and a month ago, we've predicted Asha and Grimsvotn are potential eruptive volcanoes. And we're going to add another one to the list tonight, unfortunately, and that's Reykjanes. And we'll get to that. Now, the inflation has been, increased in, been increasing at Ashtra Volcano over the last few weeks. According to the latest news, that inflation is now 14 centimeters since the inflation was detected at the end of August on Saturday, the 9th of October. So that is just a few months. 14 centimeters is no joke. And that means there is a large amount of magma being in place under Ashtra. And so big heads up there. And also, the four point, the three point two magnitude at Ostra was the law, strongest earthquake in Ostra volcano in the last twenty years, according to the news. That's bad news for people who know how to predict volcanic eruptions like Diamond at the Magnetic Reversal News and Oppenheimer Ranch Project. We know that means bad news. And so, let's just come over to the seismographs. We'll actually look at the seismic map. The whole country and see what's going on. Here's Austria up here. So we just do have some seismicity clustering over the last several days there. None of it in higher magnitude, but I noticed these stars here at the Reykjanes Peninsula and this cluster and something has awoken there. But first, let's talk about Let's talk about Asha Volcano and the information they have over at the Global Volcanism Program. And I'm talking about the eruptive history. Now, this volcano Asha has a typical eruptive history of VEI-2 and the potential for VEI-5 here in 1875 during the Dalton Minimum, VEI-5. And back in 8910 BC, VEI-5. So it has the potential for VEI-5. The standard is VEI-2. So what we would glean from that, quite simply, is that when this volcano erupts, shortly because of 14 centimeters of inflation of magma means it will erupt and it's also inflating at the right time frame for its eruptive periodicity that when it erupts it will erupt between VEI2 and VEI5 probably closer to VEI2 and that's Ostia just one of the major volcanoes that we have to be worried about in Iceland now we also have Grimsvotn here under the glacier which has currently uh, been outputting joculips, which are glacial outburst floods. And what that does is it releases pressure from the ice, from the caldera, which then rises and erupts. So this is long overdue for an eruption. Should happen anytime this year. We could have Ostia and Grimm's Ostia erupting at VEI 2, Grimm's Voten erupting at VEI 4 and 5, and now Reykjanes Ridge. This cluster. This seismic swarm just happening moments ago is on Reykjanes Ridge. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means the Reykjanes Ridge right here is coming alive. And the Reykjanes Ridge is an offshore volcano that is similar to the, uh, attached to the same system that the current eruption in Glendengalda or Fagradlsfall is erupting. So this is all from the same mid-ocean ridge vents. And the last known eruption at Reykjanes is 1831. Yes, back in the Dalton minimum. And it was erupting at VEI-3. Now, this is a sub-surface volcano. It's under the ocean, so it's not giving us any of that information there. So maybe I'm a little mistaken on what's actually happening here. But the Reykjanes volcano, uh, the uptick anyway, is offshore. So I don't know if there's an island here or a volcano sticking up. I don't know a lot about Iceland. I just know about the facts that I research. And this volcano typically erupts at VEI 3 or 4, as we can see here, mostly VEI 3 and 4. 
And so we could be looking at a frio magmatic eruption happening off the tip of the Reckianus Ridge here, the on the Reckianus Ridge, off the Reckianus Peninsula. And up here is the capital city of Reykjavik. And this could be a frio magmatic eruption of epic proportions because that burns seawater and it's just fantastic to witness. And we'll leave you the data on Reckianus and everything else, including Austria, as well as the live stream over here in La Palma. A lot going on. Volcanic uptick worldwide, if you want my opinion, um, is very minor. Uh, if you look at all the normal volcanic rates over the last several hundred years, if you could gather that data, this is no not much different than any other time in the historic past. What is different is that the volcanoes that are erupting are indicative of cyclic volcanic eruptions during grand minima times. So that's the unique scenario we have here. Unfortunately, some of the volcanoes that are involved in those unique solar minimum, grand solar minima explosions are the ones that, well, change the climate and change humanity forever, like Krakatoa. Hope you got something out of the video. We have a new volcano, a new uptick at the Reykjanes Ridge, hasn't erupted for over 100 years, since 1831, and is now our new item, well, of research. We're going to keep a close eye on the Reykjanes Ridge. It's our opinion that this baby has a high probability of eruption in the near future. Not only that, Ostja, well, and Grimsvotten. So we have Ostja, Grimsvotten, Fagradosfall, which is ongoing, and now the Reckianus Ridge, a volcano that hasn't erupted since 1831. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when almost no scientist will go out on a limb to tell you the information that I just told you. All facts, no conjecture. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where, well, volcanoes, they be exploding, and we be reporting on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe. There's the seismic tremor increase down there. That's a boom. Knowledge. All the links will be below. We'll see you soon.